welcome back to truck stuff and thanks for watching and i hope you hit that subscribe button let me spell this out for you though it's t-r-u-k-s-t-u-f don't mistake it for the other guy please because i really need the help <laughs> <laughs> and i'm jb reviews and as you guys know the new cummins is on the horizon now, Elephant Maroons, one of your sources told you it's going to probably be a 7.2 displacement. Yeah. Um, I think that with all of the changes that's happening in Stellantis right now, we are seeing an avoidance of mistakes. So, I believe, and from what I have heard from my sources, the 7.2 is still in the works. They just want to do a little bit more R&D on it before they release it out into the production line. Which, please do. We don't want to see the same mistakes happen in the 7.2 as we've seen in the 5th gen. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on the, them going away from the CGI? Oh, please, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't care to save 45 pounds worth of extra weight because they want to cheaper production basically the CGI blocks are not stronger than an iron block you can argue with me until you're blue in the face and I will never say that CGI is a stronger more viable option than old cast iron can't even get away with it with aluminum um, but, but you get more payload with the CGI right 45 pounds please the truck after it's driven off the lot and goes down a dirt road is gonna have more than that in mud on it <laughs> You know, if we want to make a big change about payload, then let's change the suspensions to up the payload. Let's change the drivetrain to up the payload. Let's not cut weight out of the heart of the vehicle in order to gain another 45 pounds worth of payload ability. Um, I never thought about that. I've, I've never seen more inspection holes get blown through the side of a block than we have on these new CGI blocks. Um, prior to this, catastrophic failure that resulted in a second or third way to look into the internals of the engine were few and far between just in the last few years I have seen more than a couple dozen where we've had pistons come through the side of the block I even had one go through the block and the PCM I believe we did do a quick video on that catastrophic failure there but not a fan of CGI never will be a fan of CGI when they started making brake rotors out of that crap I went oh, <laughs> what are you doing to us <laughs> it all boils down to the cost and I don't care what other band-aid they try and put over it for a name the only reason why they do CGI is cost of production it's not stronger it's lighter it's weaker mm. and that's it so, whatever reason that they give you other than that is just, you know, trying to blow smoke up your skirt. So, now you guys understand my, it makes sense, <laughs> my feelings on CGI blocks or CGI parts, period. I'm not a fan. Well, when you said what you said, I mean, hey, why would you try to do weight savings where it's critical at on the block? And to your point... There have been a lot of inspection holes on the CGI. Even back when I was in Maryland, I actually did a video on one too that had an inspection hole in it. But as far as maintenance goes, let's kind of switch gears and talk about maintenance for a second. So the intake manifold has been re-engineered for improved airflow and top-loaded cartridge filters for oil and fuel. So it will simplify the maintenance basically. What are your thoughts on them getting away from what they've always done? Well, let's talk about the the redesigned air intake manifold. I think finally that an engineer went, maybe the aftermarket industry has got it right. You look at Gail Banks and what he has done with the Monster Ram intake. You look at any of the other manufacturers that do aftermarket intake manifolds for these Cummins engines. And just bolting on a, a, a solid part increases efficiency, it increases performance it decreases EGTs by a simple bolt-on of a part and it doesn't affect the warranty of the vehicle at all mm. so I think the engineers finally realized that the crap that they've been putting on these engines is 
a restriction and they needed to improve that especially with the new power demands that the public is demanding out of these workhorses I think somebody has actually taken what the aftermarket industry has been doing for years and tried to apply it onto an industrial level you know putting out hundreds of thousands of vehicles in a year mm. you know the reason why a lot of the reason why they don't follow what the aftermarket has done is because of cost of production well if you can engineer a way to reduce the cost of production but still put it on a platform that produces a lot of hold on a sec and so yeah I, th I think that they're actually following a good path on improving the ability for these engines to breathe so we'll see how it looks when we actually have one where we can touch it and feel it and play with it and stuff you know <laughs> oh yeah so we got to talk about the grid heater that was something that i was a little excited about because i like glow plugs but <laughs> what are your thoughts more parts more more ability for parts to fail inherently glow plugs create more noise so that's another reason that Cummins has not gone to glow plugs in the past is you have to have a pre-combustion chamber whether you build that into the head or you build that into the piston you still have to have some sort of a pre-combustion chamber for that glow plug to do its job and that that pre-combustion chamber has a lot of tendencies to make the pinging noise that is associated with a lot of the glow plug style engines so we have from a mechanic standpoint you got another part to fail and they will fail you have more noise which everybody complains about a clattering diesel anyway so why would you add something that's going to create more noise now you have to put another rubber foam dampener on across the top of the engine to try and soak up some of that noise yeah um, i'm not a fan of glow plugs we've seen massive glow plug issues in all generations of the eco diesel the earlier generations nine times out of ten they break off in the head and now you have to replace the head the new ones they don't break off because they finally realized that that little tiny skinny little glow plug was breaking every time they tried to pull it out so they just made it beefier mm -hmm. hopefully on the Cummins they make it simpler beefier we don't have a whole lot of issues on replacing those parts which we will be replacing those parts so, yeah. yeah not a fan of glow plugs yeah, no, that's interesting. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see how that goes. So HP transmission, which is, I mean, you're you're a huge fan of ZF. You I, have one in your truck. Yes, I love ZF transmissions, and just by the the proof of putting it behind the highest horsepower gasoline engines on the market, it, it shows testament to how strong these transmissions are. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a big difference between horsepower and torque, I'm aware of this, but the transmission has the ability to be strengthened from generation to generation to the point where now it can handle the massive amounts of power and the torque that these diesel engines are going to give it. I love ZF transmissions. They are very simple. There's just a whole lot of planetary gear sets in there that are being held by holding clutches so it just makes it a lot more simpler to work on a lot more dependable than the RF transmissions or the Eisen transmission I've always been a fan of Eisen transmissions I think the, the public has caused the demise of the Eisen transmission you know, that, that transmission is meant to work it is not meant to go to the grocery store or take your kids to a soccer game. It is made to pull the guts out of China. And because the public doesn't like the way it shifts, they've had to cap its head off. They've had to take away all the strength and reliability associated with the Eisen for 100 years and cap its head off just to appease the masses. So... With that being said, the ZF transmission is going to be the best of both worlds. You're going to have a nice smoothing, smoother shifting transmission, and you're going to have the gears to keep you in your power band 
because of course the ZFs can be an eight speed instead of the six speeds. They're gonna be in your power band a lot better for towing and hauling. Mm. So yeah, let's hope they don't try and call it a fuel for life transmission either. Though. <laughs> We don't do that either. <laughs> it still has to be serviced, people. Yeah. I don't care if it's in your 1500, your Eco Diesel, or the new ones coming out in your big trucks. You still have to service your transmission fluid. Yeah. In fact, if you want to hop on ZF Industries website and look at the maintenance schedule for an 8HP 70, 75, 80, 85, 90, whatever, they recommend that that filter and that fluid be replaced every 60,000 miles not fill for life. I think I beat that one in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. So what, what are your closing remarks? What are you hoping to see from this new engine? Is it the flat tap it? Is it what, what is it? Getting away from hydraulic lash adjusters? What is it? Make metal hard again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we'll, we'll throw out the MAGA reference there. Um, I, I, you know, the the manual adjusted rocker arms with flat tappet solid lifters worked for 30 plus years. Back to the same thing with this oil filter housing crap. Why change something that has worked for 30 years and worked very well? It's not that we've put up with it. It worked. That's why they never changed it. And now some engineer had to say oh we need to change it to this it was a bad idea changing to a hydraulic roller lifter design in these powerhouses um the the other part of that is the production side of it it probably wouldn't be near a bad an idea if we had production side actually making the metals hard instead of doing these very fast cheap surface hardening procedures on the metal ah it sucks um I really hope that with the new designs, whether it's in the new 6.7 or the 7.2s, hopefully we do see those come into production, but I hope that they actually spend a little bit more time and a little bit more money and making sure that they're getting parts that have been properly heat treated. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big fan of this new procedure. Again, trying to save money and cost. I hope that the engineers have all learned their lessons with it. And I hope that with the changes within Stellantis, that they're going to see the error in their ways and go back to making dependable, reliable vehicles. Something that, you know, I was, I was reading an article the other day that Stellantis state sales in the Ram side has dropped 29%. We're talking a number of last year, I believe there was only 229,000 vehicles sold of Ram heavy duty trucks, whereas in Chevy and Ford were closer to 600, 650,000. Um, if that isn't proof in the pudding that what you've been doing is wrong, I don't know what is. So I think some major changes need to be made. We need to get back on top again, not just in sales, but we need to get back on top in reliability and customer satisfaction which everybody's having a problem with customer satisfaction right now but yeah seems like this one's really pounded down that it's bad we're in dire straits here so. and as far as my viewpoint on the new stuff a lot of people have given me a lot of grief or yeah, I should say, given the, the three liter a lot of grief, not really me, I'm just a mechanic with my own opinion about stuff. Advancements never succeed without failures. You have to have the failures in order to make something better. You don't hit a home run out of the ballpark. You know, we had a lot of engines that come and went before we had the old style Hemis. Then that Hemi turned into a Magnum and that Magnum turned into another Hemi and there were changes made along the way to make it better. Well, we've outlived the ability for the 5.7 Hemi to keep up with the competition. So changes have to be made. We go with the twin screwed, twin turboed, three liter 
V6, I'm not going to know until we see the failure rate. Yeah. You know, you can have failure rates in the, the Grand Wagoneers that have shown some of the weaknesses in it. You got to have the failures before you can make the improvements. So, for all of you who are having problems, you bought the first year of production line. My daddy always told me, never do that. You never buy the first year of a new product because of those failure rates. So, you know, take heed and warning from everybody else. Wait until they've improved the design. If they get rid of the three liter and go back to either the five seven Hemi or a modification of the five seven Hemi, well, time will tell what's going to happen there. But until we actually see that engine out in production and on the road in the trucks, remember I'm a truck mechanic. I'm not a cheap mechanic. We won't know what those failure points are going to be until we give that engine some time. I love technology. I like advancements in technology. Some of you don't, and that's your, your right, and that's your opinion. Me, I want to see the three liter succeed. There you go. Yeah, I mean, gotta give it time. The EcoBoost, wow, that thing still has failure rates out the wazoo. They still run it. That's a twin turbo gas engine with cam phasers that sound like a mariachi band running down the street. <laughs> <laughs> I must be on one today. You must be on one today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Oh, yep. boy. Well, hey, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Yes, please do. Support this. You'll see more videos as they unveil the new engine. And yeah. Yeah. I'm excited to see what truck stuff aka well josh aka truck stuff has to say i i will be doing my best to bring the content that i think that the viewers want to see mm -hmm. so if there is something specific you want to see let me know in the first available opportunity that i can get to tear it apart rip into it and show you guys what i think and feel about it i'll do it i mean we don't do this stuff just because we're good at it we do it because we love to answer the questions and get the information out there for the people to to see and have an opinion on and everything else so if you have any recommendations for content let us know we'll do our best to to give you that give you that content but again i want to say thank you personally you guys have all made this a very very enjoyable experience getting to the level that we've gotten to as fast as we've gotten to um, I wouldn't have been able to do any of this without my boy here. It's He has been awesome in guiding me and helping me. and Yeah, it's been fun. But I want to say thank you and subscribe and keep watching.